like one of the most difficult choices I've ever faced uh, in life was was in 2008, um, and um, I think I had uh, like maybe 30 million dollars left, in, or 30 or 40 million dollars left in 2008, and I had two choices: I could put it all into one company, and then the other company would definitely die, um, or split it between the two companies. And, but if I split it between two companies, then both might die. Um, and you know, when you put your blood, sweat, and tears into creating something, or building something, it's like a child. Um, and so it's like, which one am I going to let one starve to death? I couldn't bring myself to do it, so I, put, I, I split the money between the two. Fortunately, thank goodness, uh, they both came through. We've got a question for the audience that builds on that. Um, what was your biggest failure and how did it change you? Well, there's a ton of failures along the way, that's for sure. Um, like I said, for, as, as I said, for, for SpaceX, the first three launches failed. And uh, we, we, actually, we were just barely able to scrape together enough parts and, and money to do the, the fourth launch. If that fourth launch had failed, we would have been dead. So multiple failures along the way. Um, I, I tried very hard to, to get the right expertise in for, for SpaceX. I tried hard to, to find a great uh, chief engineer for the rocket, but it, not, the good chief engineers wouldn't join, and the bad ones, well, there was no, no point in hiring them. So I ended up being chief engineer of the rocket. Um, so if I could have found somebody better, then we would have maybe had less than three failures. Um, the, the biggest issue I see with so-called AI experts is that they, they think they know more than they do. Um, and they think they're smarter than they actually are. Um, in general, we are all much smarter than we think we are, but much less smart, dumber than we think we are, um, by a lot. So, yeah. this, is, this tends to plague, plague smart people. Um, they just can't, they, they define themselves by their intelligence and they, they don't like the idea that a machine could be way smarter than them, so they discount the idea, which is fundamentally flawed. That's the wishful thinking uh, situation. Um, I'm really quite close to, I'm very close to the, to the cutting edge in AI, and it scares the hell out of me. Um, it's capable of vastly more than almost anyone knows, and the rate of improvement is exponential. Um, you can see this in things like AlphaGo, which went from, in the span of maybe six to nine months, it went from being unable to beat even a reasonably good Go player to then beating the European world champion who was ranked 600, then beating Lisa Dole 4-5, um, who had been world champion for many years, then beating the current world champion, then beating everyone while playing simultaneously. Then, uh, then there was AlphaZero, uh, which crushed AlphaGo 100 to zero. <laughs> and Alpha Zero just learned by playing itself, and it, it can play basically any game that you put the rules in for. If you, whatever rules you give it, just, it literally read the rules, play the game, and be superhuman for any game. Um, nobody expected that rate of improvement. If you ask those, so, the, those same experts uh, who think AI is not progressing at the rate that I'm saying, I think you will find that their predictions for things like Go and, and other and, and other uh, AI advancements have, uh, their, their batting average is quite weak. It's not good. Um, the, the, we'll see this also with, uh, with self-driving. Uh, I think probably by end of next year, self-driving will be, will encompass essentially all modes of driving and be at least 100 to 200% um, safer than a person by the end of next year. We're talking like maybe 18 months from now. Um, uh, NHTSA did a study on, on Tesla's autopilot version one, which is relatively primitive, and found that it was a 45% reduction in highway accidents. And that's despite autopilot one being just version one. Um, version two, I think, will be at least two or three times better. That's the current version that's running right now. Um, so the, the rate of improvement is really dramatic. Uh, we have to figure out some way to ensure that the advent of digital superintelligence is one which is 
symbiotic with humanity. I think that's the single biggest existential crisis that we face and the, and the most pressing one. And how do we do that? I mean, if, if we take it that it's inevitable at this point, that some version of AI is coming down the line, how do we, how do we steer through that? Well, I, I'm not normally an advocate of regulation and oversight. I mean, I think one should generally err on the side of minimizing those things. But this is a case where you have a very serious danger to the public. And so therefore, there needs to be a public body that um, has insight and then oversight on to confirm that everyone is uh, developing AI safely. Um, this is extremely important. Um, I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. Um, and nobody would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That, that would be insane. And mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Far. So why do we have no regulatory oversight? This is insane. What's well, a question you've been asking for a long time. I think it's a question that's come to the forefront over the last year, where you begin to realize that it doesn't necessarily, I think if we've, we've all been focused in on the idea of artificial superintelligence, right? Which is clearly a danger, but maybe, you know, a little further out. Um, what's happened over the last year is you've seen artificial, what I've been calling artificial stupidity. You've been talking about, you know, algorithmic manipulation of social media. Like, we're, we're in it now. It's starting, it's starting to happen. How do we, how do we, is it, What's the intervention at this point? Um, to be honest, I'm not really all that worried about the short-term stuff. Things that are, um, not, like narrow AI is not a species level risk. Um, it, 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 will, it will result in dislocation, uh, in lost jobs, and um, it, you know, the, the sort of better weaponry and that kind of thing. But it is not a fundamental species level risk, uh, whereas uh, digital superintelligence is. Uh, so it's really all about laying the groundwork to make sure that if, if humanity collectively decides that creating digital superintelligence is the right move, then we should do so very, very carefully. Um, very, very carefully. Um, this is the most important thing that we could possibly do. Yeah. Uh, building on that, other, other than AI and the, the other issues that you're, that you're tackling, transportation, energy production, aerospace, what issues should our next generation of leaders be focused on solving? What else is coming down the line? Um, Well, I mean, there are, there are other things that are on a longer time scale. The, um, and obviously the things that I believe in, like extending life beyond Earth, making life multi-planetary. Um, I'm a big believer in sort of um, Asimov's foundation series, or the principle that you, you really want to, um, you know, I recommend reading the foundation series, but it's like, if, if you, if you know that there's a, there's likely to be, we don't know, but there's likely to be another Dark Ages, which it seems, my guess is there probably will be at some point. Um, I'm, not, I'm not predicting that we're about to enter Dark Ages, but that there's some probability that we will, particularly if there's a Third World War. Um, then we want to make sure that there's enough of a, of a seed of human civilization somewhere else uh, to bring civilization back. Um, and perhaps uh, shorten the length of the Dark Ages. Um, you know, I think that's why it's, imp that it's important to get a self-sustaining base, um, ideally on Mars, because Mars is far enough away from Earth that a, that, um, a war on Earth, the Mars base might survive. It's more likely to survive than a Moon base. But I think a Moon base and a Mars base um, that, um, that could perhaps help regenerate life back here on Earth would be really important and to get that done before a possible World War III. Um, you know, last, last century we had two massive world wars, three if you count the Cold War. I think it's unlikely that we will never have another world war again. 
Um, there probably will be at some point. Or if we have another one, it'll be the last. Yeah, it, it, it just could be radioactive rubble. You know? um, so, again, I'm not predicting that. <laughs> it just seems like, well, if you say given enough time, will it be most likely? Given enough time. This, this, is, this is, has been our pattern in the past. Uh, so, um, like I really believe in the zeroth law of Asimov's zeroth law. You know, take the set of actions most likely to support um, humanity into the future.